This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company New Cipher. I'm sitting down right now with Michael Igorov, who is CTO at the company. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Absolutely. And I have a lot of great questions here from our tech team, so are you ready to get started? Sure. All right. So first off, what does New Cipher make? Give me the elevator pitch. All right, so we're making um, encryption for distributed systems. Um, and uh, uh, it's like permission management over encrypted data. Um, uh, we do encryption such a way that there is no single point of failure in your system. So that like there is no single point you can hack into to get all like keys for all the data. Um, OK. And uh, can you talk about your startup's founding story for me? So initially, we started with something called ZeroDB, okay. which was an uh, end-to-end uh, encrypted database. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it was uh, um, pretty um, sparkling a lot of curiosity in the community. Yeah. Um, but we found that the most uh, practical and interesting part uh, was not about like how to query data, how to search in the data, but mm -hmm. in how to share data. Okay. Uh, so let's say you have multiple participants in your, uh, which use your um, product, right? Mm -hmm. And they all have their own encryption keys. So uh, how you uh, allow, um, you know, somebody else to read data, to decrypt data with their own key mm -hmm. without having access to your encryption key. Um, and traditionally, this, uh, this was solved by having a centralized system which uh, would see everything and encrypt everything, all the data for like whoever will ask if he has permissions. Mm -hmm. But our pitch was to have everything end-to-end -end encrypted. So the central server uh, didn't, uh, we didn't want the central server to have access to any of your data. And uh, that's how we work. Okay. Um, so, but, so right now we are focused on sharing uh, over encrypted data pretty much. Got it. Okay, wonderful. And so now from a technical standpoint, what problems do traditional big data encryption systems have today? Right. So traditional big data systems, um, I would say, let's say if, if we talk about Hadoop, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it has a pretty well organized uh, en encryption. Um, they have a key management system. The problem here is that uh, this key management system concentrates all your encryption keys. Mm -hmm. So it's a single point of failure. If, you, uh, if somebody accesses that somehow, um, they could access all the keys. Of course, you could use hardware security modules, but you know, still. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, with uh, with our customers, we found that uh, they actually want to outsource their Hadoop deployments to the cloud while keeping this key management system on premises. Mm -hmm. And this makes Hadoop uh, pretty slow because the cloud will talk to your local key management system, and uh, these you know queries they, they they're not very fast uh, if if the distance is large. So and oh, okay. uh, we we found the way how to um, basically delegate access to temporary keys in, in the cloud and then the cloud can temporarily access your data uh, without having the golden keys over there and this would be uh, uh, this actually works faster but uh, you know it's not only Hadoop there is also Kafka mm -hmm. uh, and uh, here it's uh, it's even a more interesting twist uh, the Kafka um, doesn't have a good encryption at rest story even. Um, and uh, we kind of go step beyond uh, encryption at rest. We have it end-to-end -end encrypted. So let's say you have, uh, uh, Kafka is a message queue system. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have multiple con producers sending messages to the message queue right. and consumers which like take those messages and process that, maybe republish that them to the queue mm -hmm. or something like that. And uh, uh, usually, um, 
their brokers, uh, which uh, um, uh, the brokers which actually run the message queue, they could see all the messages in unencrypted form. Okay. So, uh, so you kind of, if you want uh, to have everything protected, you probably would want to uh, encrypt everything before yes. publishing. Yes. But then there is a, a problem that you need to share the same encryption key with everybody, which is mm -hmm. not very secure. True. Okay. So, and our technology, proxy re-encryption, allows to actually uh, uh, to make everybody having their own encryption key, uh -huh. and uh, with their own encryption key, they can see only like what they are allowed to see. Okay. Like the owner of the data can say, uh, you know, the guy with that encryption key can uh, can actually read my data temporarily, and uh, uh, you know, this permission is uh, managed uh, can be managed by the brokers, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, the brokers cannot use this permission to decrypt the data, only to allow that guy to see the data. Okay. And I know you just touched on it briefly, but can you explain to me in more detail what exactly is proxy re-encryption? Right, so proxy re-encryption is just a set of en encryption algorithms, usually public key encryption algorithms, mm -hmm. uh, where you can uh, allow some other key to, uh, to decrypt your data. Or I would say probably more like you can allow an untrusted third party mm -hmm. to convert your data to be decryptable by somebody else. Okay. So let's say I want to share uh, a file with you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and let's say I, I stored my file encrypted in, I don't know, Dropbox, okay. right? Yep. Uh, what do I normally do if, if I use like proper public key encryption? I would probably download this file, decrypt it, encrypt it with your public key and send it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is, um, if I'm stored like petabytes of data, this would be not very practical because I would need to download all of that. Right, that's a lot. It's, it's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah. All right. So what proxy re-encryption allows to do, I would take your public key, mm -hmm. my private key, calculate uh, some um, special like mathematical function of two, which produces a re-encryption key. Mm -hmm. And then I give this re-encryption key to the server, uh, be it like Dropbox or some proxy. And this re-encryption key only allows to transform uh, data for you. So as you read it, the data would be transformed as if it was encryptable uh, by your key. Oh, okay. So, so it, someone it else can't just data. do that. So someone else cannot do that. Uh, uh, you just say, you know, this thing allows uh, this, you know, little um, re-encryption key mm -hmm. allows to transform. Uh, only my data, only for that person. Got and that's it, okay. it. It cannot do anything else. That's really cool. It cannot decrypt. Nice. That's the most important thing. Okay, okay. So you don't have to trust the server anymore. That's, uh, that's the whole point. Okay, wonderful. And now, what new approach to key exchanges does this technology take to solve the multi-user access problem in big data encryption? Right, yeah. So uh, this, this is exactly where it's useful, where you have multiple users. Because mm -hmm. um, if you have one user, well, you can download the data, decrypt and encrypt with one user's key. But imagine now you have a thousand users, mm. users so you would need to encrypt a thousand times for a yes. thousand users, which, yes. is, which is pretty hard. Yeah. So, and uh, you can just uh, uh, ask the server to transform uh, data in real time for whatever user uh, reads it, if that user has a permission. Uh, so you can, um, well, it's, it's not actually only big data where it's useful. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, we've got uh, a very interesting decentralized application twist, um, really? yeah, where you can, um, like decentralized applications are kind of serverless applications which you build uh, using uh, leveraging blockchain. Mm -hmm. And there is a whole new eco ecosystem uh, being built right now for that. Um, and they've got, uh, uh, there is a kind of storage uh, ap uh, appeared, like several storage solutions such as IPFS. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is uh, no good encryption story over there at all. Mm -hmm. And with the uh, centralized, like, it's really like rebuilding the internet. That's what, what's wow, happening yeah. over there. Yep. Um, and uh, when internet is uh, secured, you usually use TLS. So it's uh, uh, encryption uh, on the wire, which uh, still like trusts the central server. Mm -hmm. So let's say you uh, use, um, I don't know, Gmail, right? Mm -hmm. You trust Google yep. uh, with all of your data. Uh, but uh, everything is secured all over the all over the wire when you connect to Google, um, and uh, with decentralized uh, applications, you don't have a central trusted server. Um, 
Okay. Which which is all right when you have only like two users communicating, like a messenger. Mm -hmm. But when you have multiple users, you have a problem. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's where proxy re-encryption uh, really helps. So we are building a decentralized application ourselves, which. Uh, uh, which actually manages uh, permissions in decentralized multi-user applications so that everything is encrypted mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so it's kind of TLS for the new decentralized internet if it really becomes the new internet yeah we will see of course yes yeah, so we'll see sooner rather than later I guess too. Um, yeah yeah okay and so now currently which products have you integrated your technology with and why did mm -hmm. you choose these products first right yeah, so on the big data side, we chose uh, Hadoop and Kafka. Okay. Uh, well, Hadoop is because it's like very widely used. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kafka is, uh, uh, the message queue is a relatively new thing, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it gains a lot of popularity yeah. uh, in financial sector especially. Oh, okay. uh, but there is a trick over here with Kafka that since it doesn't do encryption at rest, mm -hmm. you cannot really get uh, like PCI compliance with it, for example, uh, not to mention that you have to trust whoever hosts ha Kafka, mm -hmm. and with our product, you don't have to trust that third party. You would meet PCI compliance yep. and uh, uh, and and things like that. So uh, this is uh, really uh, attractive for financial services, um, and uh, um, we also have uh, some uh, some customers of ours who build something um, I would call. Um, data lakes uh, okay. uh, so it's like where uh, uh, d industry data lakes where like multiple customers of theirs contribute data and uh, share bet between each other mm -hmm. but uh, they th themselves the wh whoever hosts this data lake they don't see any of unencrypted data so they don't have to be trusted in this regard okay. um, it, it's really like a little bit similar to our um, uh, to our product for decentralized applications, but yeah. instead of uh, uh, instead of decentralized network and blockchain, you have this central company. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, the product is uh, is pretty much very very similar. Okay, and so now, what other products are you planning to integrate with in the future? Right. So, uh, so as I said, this uh, you know the decentralized uh, encryption for decentralized applications or uh, mm -hmm. new cipher KMS uh, is. Uh, um, is something we are go we are going to um, uh, to actually announce uh, pretty uh, pretty soon. Oh wow! Okay. Um, and we are very actively working on that one. And now, are you planning for any cloud-based services? Uh, yeah. So uh, I would say we we have. Uh, um, it, it looks like we're uh, not really the cloud-based. Mm -hmm. Where we we have. Uh, the product which allows to use the cloud, but oh, we don't okay. host it ourselves, gotcha. which is uh, like for Hadoop and Kafka. And also we have, uh, our, uh, we're going to have our product for decentralized applications, which is new Cypher KMS, but actually to host something ourselves mm -hmm. in the cloud, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it doesn't look like uh, we quite need to do that. Because like if, you, if we want to, um, um, well, if we want to uh, demo something, we can use the decentralized applications piece. Ah, because it's not okay. like only for new uh, developers who build new decentralized mm -hmm. internet. It's also to demo the technology. And uh, um, the customers who want uh, big data encryption are usually, uh, let's say, large financial com mm -hmm. companies okay. uh, who uh, who don't necessarily want to somebody else to host something in the cloud? They want to kind of manage that themselves, even Makes in the cl even in the cloud. Yeah. So, so they would probably they would uh, rather like to license uh, the product. Um, but yeah, we've uh, we still got the um, demo for them, which is at the same time building the new decentralized internet. Okay. And now, what does the future roadmap look for you? Look like for you? Right. So. Uh, since it's uh, so it's pretty interesting we've got uh, this uh, ce centralized part of the company which is doing the big data product mm -hmm. and something for decentralized applications and uh, we are going to try uh, to to balance these two mm -hmm. uh, so that you know uh, they contribute uh, to each other um, the thing is that um, this community which builds the decentralized applications the same as the community or for like building new cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. uh, 
if they are very ready to adopt uh, new uh, cryptographic technologies. Um, whereas financial companies, they are a little bit slower in that. Mm. So, um, and so we probably uh, the like newest and gr greatest stuff, we're probably going to try with the decentralized applications and uh, then the financial companies or whoever mm -hmm. wants, uh, wants to use that uh, would uh, probably follow. Um, that being said, we managed to, to make uh, proxy re-encryption compatible with pretty standard and tested algorithms. Mm -hmm. So we're just uh, adding a little piece of transforming the data to, uh, to some of the existing um, cryptography. Okay, nice. And lastly, are there any other interesting product features that you'd like to highlight or talk about? Actually, as you probably noticed, I'm really excited about the uh, our encryption system for decentralized applications, yep, the yep. Cypher KMS. Um, I probably can uh, say a little bit more about that. It, it's not only for decentralized applications. It, it actually can be used for pretty centralized stuff. You could, yeah. I think you can even use that as an encryption uh, system, uh, key management as a service for Hadoop. Really? Yeah, or when you like deploy your um, Amazon instances or containers, mm. you could okay. grant access to those, uh, and uh, this would be like, you would be building a pretty much uh, traditional um, centralized software, but you could be using this uh, key management as a service running by the centralized network. Wow. And that, was, that would still work. And uh, this network is actually guaranteed to not see your uh, unencrypted data, even wow. like uh, whatever happens, even if, um, um, I don't know, uh, NSA and uh, Russia would, uh, uh, you know, uh, attack all the servers yep. at the same time. In the they, worst they, possible situation. In the worst possible situations, uh, situation, they would uh, not see anything. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, actually, it's, it becomes more secure if uh, multiple nation states start, start attacking it. Really? Yeah, because, like, they, uh, if it's many of them, then you don't have, uh, like, one uh, party attacking everything, mm -hmm. they would fight for that, yeah. and uh, that uh, uh, that would actually increase the security rather than uh, decrease it, because they are kind of uh, um, because there are like multiple pieces of uh, uh, you uh, you would only get uh, to to a tricky point if one party takes all, over all, all the network, mm. then they can, say, apply permissions longer than, mm -hmm. than you should. Gotcha. Uh, but if you have, uh, uh, but we kind of, that's, that's why we use blockchain over there to yep. provide decentralization so that this doesn't happen. Yes. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, um, and, and also uh, as for like future plans, mm -hmm. I think we probably will go a little bit beyond proxy re-encryption. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. But the proxy re-encryption itself, it's also, I've seen it called uh, key homomorphic encryption. Okay. Uh, so it's like partially homomorphic encryption, which allows to change encryption on, or change the key uh, under which data is encrypted. But uh, okay. yeah, maybe, uh, maybe in future we uh, would be able to uh, to look at uh, fully homomorphic encryption for some uh, for some use cases, mm -hmm. we will see. Uh, because I, I'm seeing some algorithms become uh, rather performant, so uh, yeah. so I, I guess in future they could be useful for little things. Okay, Michael, thank you so much for speaking with me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thank you. It was, was a very nice interview. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. And that's all the time we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.